Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another piano lesson with Warren, the channel you want to be to learn everything about gospel music, gospel piano, music theory, the whole shebang. This is the place you need to be every Wednesday. There's a new tutorial coming up. Before we get into today's content, just want to say a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. You guys are special to us. And unfortunately for me, my mother passed away about 25 years ago. Yep, I was about eight, nine years old when that happened. Sadly, she died in a car accident in the Cayman Islands. So I'm wishing you all a happy Mother's Day. Um, my aunts and older cousins have sort of been my mother over the years. And I just, um, just having that sort of motherly figure around is super important, especially for males. And so for you mothers who are very active in your son's or daughter's life, I just want to commend you for the tremendous work you are doing. Okay. So in today's lessons, we're going to talk about the left hand. A lot of people ignore the left hand because the cool things only seem to happen in the right hand. The little runs, the riffs, the lines, the arpeggios, the improvisations, the melody. And so a lot of people just ignore the left hand. But the left hand is what I call the sort of secret weapon for you to really scale up your playing to becoming an advanced. You have to get this left hand sort of discipline. Naturally, your right hand will be more agile and flexible because most of the heavy lifting sometimes happens with the right hand, you know? And so eventually that right hand sort of outperforms the left hand and that's normal. Even for me today, I am left-handed. I write, throw everything with my left hand, but my right hand is still more efficient and agile than my left. That's not something you can really change unless you're ambidextrous. That's a different situation right there. So what I want to talk to you guys today about is five left hand positions that every piano player needs to be implementing, especially to get into that advanced level where you start playing the more extended chords. You have to change how you use that left hand. Because a lot of beginners probably just play octaves when they're playing chords, or they probably just play single notes. And that's okay if you're playing triads. Yeah? Or... But once you get into the more luscious chords, the more advanced chords, you got to get away from just octaves or single notes. And so I'm going to show you some additional things that you can do. The first one is the octave with the fifth. And this is also a beginner's voicing, but it's a lot better than just playing a single note because it fills out your sound. And so if I'm doing, see, octaves and fifths. And I still use that voicing a lot, especially when I'm playing a chord that doesn't have a seventh, I go straight for that octave and fifth. It really gives that left hand sound a nice sound, nice full sound. Now, in addition to adding that octave and fifth, I want to also challenge you for my more beginners who are new to this concept to immediately start adding the ninth to your chords. <coughs> what do I mean by that? <coughs> See that right here? It's a C, but I'm adding the nine. And so, once you start to add that nine to your chord, listen to how the sound just start to sound a little bit more mature. Mm -hmm. Your triads start to sound a little bit more mature. Now, another thing that I'm going to challenge the beginners to do is to move away from just playing all your chords in root position. Check this out. First inversion, 
and I'm adding the nine at the top. This means now I drop that root note from the chord because the left hand is already covering that. And then if I'm playing a progression like You see how that gels more nicely, opposed to this one. So that's just a few things I wanted to add on the side. But the left hand is what we're focusing on. Get used to just doing that. Once you get comfortable in playing your chords, octave with fifth. Now it's time to start to add some sevens. And that's where the left hand comes in. So you start to move away from octave and fifth, and you can do something like just one and seven. And then you can have stuff like... Ooh, see? Basic voicings, but it sounds nice. And in my right hand, I'm just playing the third and the fifth of the chord. Now you can even go ahead and add that nine back in and then you have mm, major nine. Now I wanna point out something real important here. If you notice when I'm on my one, I'm adding the nine. When I go to the three, I remove the nine. Why is that? Because E minor 9 would be, it's a beautiful chord, but then that takes us outside the key. Because I'm in the key of C, we're adding that F sharp and it starts to make things a little bit wonky. So to be safe, we just remove that 9, keep it at a 7. Then we introduce that add 9 again when we go to the 4. Because it's belonging to the key. That's what we call diatonic. It stays within the key. We're not introducing any black notes yet, yeah? We go to the G, we do the same thing. And by just making these minor tweaks to your chords, more beginners and later beginners, your chords will start to sound full. And that's because you're disciplining the left hand to be strategic and specific about what notes you're playing. One and seven, that's it, nothing else for now. So if I'm playing a song like, Ooh, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. Yeah? We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. A beginner can do that, and your chords will sound rich. Now, the third position we're gonna look at is adding back that fifth to the left hand. So the one and seven, you can add back that fifth. And again, I use this a lot, so. We need you, Lord. It fill out the chord more. We need you, Lord, right now. Then we can do. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. Yeah. Just add that fifth in there. Mm. And that one, and that add nine. Disciplining that left hand. Yeah. Now, if we go now to step or position number four, what I do now, I just sort of switch. I still keep this one and seven, but now I add the third. That's another position you should practice. Because that's the essence of the chord right there. With just these three notes, I know that that's an F major nine. And it sounds like an F, I mean, an F major seven. And it sounds like an F major seven. So if you want to go off and do more sort of experimental lines, all you got to do with the left hand is that, and it keeps the chord.
one, seven, and the third. And the last position I'm gonna show you for the left hand is the one and the three. And I do this typically when I'm doing playing more bigger chords, or if I'm doing something like, you know? When I'm doing stuff like that. Yeah, I got the third over here, but again, I'm just creating more balance for the lower register by adding that third. So if we go back to the song, We Need You, Lord, you'll see how I use these different hand position in combination. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. See, octave with the fifth. I mean, it's one, seven, and five. We lift our hands and bow our knees and worship at your throne. We need you, Lord. One and three. We need you right now. And you might say, Warren, how do you decide whether to use the one and seven, the one and three, five? How do you decide which position to choose? I make that decision based on the register, the register that I'm in. Everything beyond, I want to say, this F right here, I call this the muddy section of the piano, meaning you got to be careful how many notes you play down there. Now let's jump back to beginners for a little bit. Let me explain something to you. <clears throat> back in the early classical days, musicians or theorists char characterized, or I should say more like physicists, characterized sound based on what we call perfect intervals. And so in music today, we call the octaves perfect. And they're more perfect because they create the least amount of dissonance. They're the same notes, just being played an octave apart. So that means if I go down here and play a C, octaves, it doesn't sound muddy because there isn't much frequency between both to create that sort of dissonance. But if I play a third, you hear how muddy that sounds? <clears throat> and so when I'm playing my chord, I'm being conscious of the left hand. If I'm going down here, I'm not going to play a seven and, and the root down here like that. It sounds too muddy. So I would play the octave or I'd play the fifth because the fifth is another interval that they call perfect interval. There's not a lot of dissonance. It sounds clean. That's why they call it perfect. Another one is the fourth. Perfect interval. So fourth, fifths, and octaves are what they call perfect intervals. And so those intervals work well in the low register. So you can go down there and play octave in a fifth or just drop an octave. But you try to go down there and play stuff like that. Ugh, sounds muddy. So you really got to avoid that stuff. And that's how I'm, that's how I make decisions based on what voicing I'm going to use for the left hand, whether it's an octave, octave and a seven, octave and a fifth, octave and a third, or just one and three. And you might say, man, that's a lot to digest, but it gets easier over time. Your, you know, your hands will naturally take certain position once you go to the lower register. Now, the same thing is said for the higher register. I wouldn't just play a single note up here. I mean, unless I want that sort of more stripped down chord. If I'm going for a more full chord, I couldn't even do stuff like, if I'm playing that chord, you know, I just fill out the triad here to give me more meat. Yeah, or, or, you know, the higher up I go, if I want to retain more 
you know, beef to that chord, even though it's in a, a thinner register, I'll just start to double up notes. Once I get to the lower register, you remove notes and keep it more to the perfect intervals. Little side note. So that's how I make decisions. But literally, those five hand position, octave in fifth, octave in seven, um, no, octave in fifth, one, five, and seven, one, three, and seven, and the one and three. 95% of my plane is going to demonstrate those things in the left hand. Unless we're talking about rootless voicings, which is a whole different thing, and I'll cover that down the line in some future tutorials. That's when you have a bass player, so you don't have to worry about the root of the chord at all. But most of the times, unless you're playing in a band, you're going to be playing alone, so you got to carry that root. And so you want to train your hands to get comfortable with those different hand positions. Yeah, because that's the same technique we use for stride piano and what they call cocktail piano. It's that same thing, that same sort of left hand pattern. All right, now I want to quickly show you some passing chords that you can add to this song. This is a little side bonus. And I'm going to make the MIDI file and the LMS file for this video available for download. So you can click that in the description and then you can throw it into Mediculous and slow things down, rip some of those chords, rip some of those runs, or you can transpose it to new keys. All right? So. We need your Lord. We need your Lord right now. We need your Lord. We need your Lord right now. Then seven. I lift my hands and bow my knees and worship at your throne. We need you, Lord. We need you right now. Those are all the chords to the song, you know? To one, to three, to four. Three, four. Then it can do a seven as a passing to get to six. Then back to three. Then to four. To four minor six. Then three, six, two as a dominant chord. And I'm adding that nine. Then. And this is like a 13 sus 4 chord. Back to 1. That's it. So this is where I'm going to put some passing chords. We need you, Lord, right now. First inversion passing. Back to 1. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. Then I'm going to go... And what I'm doing right there is just a 7-3-6, or what we call a 2-5-1 passing going to A minor. For that B chord, you can voice like that, sharp 11th, or, or just, or, you know, there are just a couple options, yeah? So, one, two, three, depending on what you want to do. If you want to do that run in the bass, then probably this is a good voicing. Or put that third in there. There's so many options. So da 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 Seven, three, see that left hand voicing again, then I lift my hands, I bow my knees, passing, 
and worship at your throne. Let me do that again so you see what I did. I need you, Lord, right now. Mm -hmm. First inversion passing. I need you, Lord. So I, I did. Remember we talked about that F sharp? Now I'm introducing it just as a, a little run. Right now. Then passing seven, three, six. I lift my hands then. Just back that up so you see what's going on there. I lift my hands. The original progression would go and bow my knees then to the four. But I'm just doing a C as a passing to get me to the four. So I lift my hands and bow my knees. And those little bass walk and worship path. Now, instead of going to this chord, your throne, a minor six, I re this chord with that B flat 13th. So, I lift my hands and bow my knees and worship at your throne. And we need you, Lord. We need you. Right now. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. And You know, we talked about that run in some previous video. And you know, it's a run you can do when going from four to a seven. I think actually I did this. Cool voicing too, yeah? Lift my hands and bow my knees. So this time, instead of just going to the C, I added that G minor, which gives me a two, five passing. I lift my hands and bow my knees. You know, doing that. I lift my hands and bow my knees and worship at your throne. Then. <laughs> so I did the same thing again. Instead of doing instead of doing that that chord right there, which takes takes me to that. Because I know my ultimate destination is six, I can just go back and with that seven three six, so I lift my hands and bow my knees and worship at your throne. We need you, Lord. We need you right now. And I'm going to show you some additional things you can do right at this spot. I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but hey, I want you to go study this stuff. Yeah. I lift my hands and bow my knees and worship at your throne. We need you, Lord. We need you right now. Turn around. We need you, Lord. 
We need you right now. Let's turn around. Then. <laughs> I'm going to show you that one. I can do. Uh-huh. So this is a sus chord, an A sus. And I have two options. I can do, resolve this to a, a flat nine chord. We need you, Lord. We need you right now. Or I can do this. I'm doing a 2-5-1 in the key of A flat. But instead of going to that A flat, I resolve it to the D. Now, how does that make sense? What kind of theory is that? Check it. So, the original progression, it's an A sus resolving to a, or, you know, I can do that sort of sharp, um, what's that right there? Flat 13s. Or, yeah, so on this A chord, now we're getting into what we call the tritone substitution. What's the tritone substitution of A? It's E flat. A tritone is an interval of an augmented fourth. A fourth, augmented fourth. And we're talking about the bass notes of the chord now. So because E flat is a tritone of A, and I know that A, is supposed to be taking me to my D. I can slip in that tritone before I get to the D. And I'm just using this voicing right now. Like a 13th. You can put the 7 in there. You see, right now, because I'm so far down, I'm not too feeling this 7th against this root. It sounds a little muddy to me. But I think it can work, or you can come up an octave and play it, and then this drops me right down to my D chord. But <laughs> before, before I get to this E flat, I slipped in a two, which is this B flat minor seven flat five. Now I know that I'm way above a lot of y'all heads, but just bear with me, yeah. This stuff is pretty, and it's so much fun. Um, so I'm doing this, this 2 minor 7 flat 5, resolve into that E flat, and then I go to my, my D. And so in context now with the song, right now, we need you, Lord, we need you, right now. Yeah? Right now We need you, Lord Ah. Ah. So one more time, I'll just play out the song for you from the top. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. We lift our hands and bow our knees and worship at your throne. We need you, Lord. We need you 
right now, yeah. We need you, Lord. We need you right now. Oh, yeah. We need you, Lord. We need you right now. I could have fun with this stuff all day. I'm just jamming out here, guys. I'm just having some fun. You know, I like to do the stuff. I look forward to shooting these videos every week. It's just fun jamming out. So I know this video was jam-packed with just a lot of information. We got beginner stuff, intermediate stuff, and the super advanced stuff. Take what you can from the video. I know not everything is going to make sense to you right now. I don't want you to get discouraged. The main things I want you to take away from this video, if anything else, is that left hand. You got to train that left hand to move away from just playing octaves and root note. Go back through the video and work through those different hand positions. I would say spend a month on each of the different hand positions to just really get comfortable with it. Eventually, we're going to be using all of them. But you got to get comfortable in training the hands. And it's more of a hand training thing than anything else. Because, you know, you can look at the piano and go, okay, this is a root, seven, and third. You know what it is. But when you're playing to sort of reach for that all the time or go to those different root seven and five or octave in this, you have to train your hands. And so this is something you have to implement during practicing because from a theoretical standpoint, it's not hard. A beginner can understand that this is a seven with a third, yeah? But knowing it and implementing, implementing it on the go is a different ball game. And what, that's what we want. We want to be able to train these things to sort of just work in connection with the brain almost automatically. All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. Remember, the entire MIDI and LMS file for this video is available for download for free. Just click the link in the link in the description of the video of this video and download it. Now, Mediculous, the guys over at gospelmusician.com is generous enough to offer a free version of Mediculous. The free version does not play MIDI. That's something they decide. They make the MIDI option into the pro pre paid version. And that's why I spend the time to create the LMS files for you guys. So you can use the LMS file and the free version of Mediculous. Because you're going to want to slow certain things down. I know that. And you're probably going to want to see how this looks in another key. So you can do that. You know? and learn some of this stuff because it's through repetition that you're gonna learn, especially towards the end, all that advanced reharm stuff. You know, again, a lot of it might not make sense to you now, but just, just keep trying it. It will make sense to you eventually. Enough blobbing from me, we're gonna close out. As always, if you're looking for more in-depth, hand-holding, systematic tutorials that goes way beyond the stuff, that you find on YouTube, head over to Piano Lesson with Warren and you can subscribe to the courses and lessons, or you can purchase them as individual downloads. Those are where you're gonna find, that, that's where you're gonna find the best stuff that's gonna really transform your gospel music playing, yeah? So don't be afraid to invest in you. And as always, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for joining us here. Give me a subscribe, a thumbs up and leave a comment section 
leave a comment in the comment section. I'm like talking backwards today. I probably had too much coffee. Leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll definitely jump in and chat with you guys. And again, thank you, my mothers, and happy Mother's Day. Y'all who have mothers, go take your mother out for some dinner or something on the weekend. You take her to a movie, The Avengers is out now. You know, I haven't seen that yet. I'm just waiting. Yeah, I'm waiting. Anyway, be well now, and I'll see you guys next Wednesday. <laughs>